Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So I just finished my internship last week and I thought I'd make a video on it, telling you a little bit about the company, how I got the job, what I worked on, what I learned, and my final thoughts. So let's get into it. So I interned at this company called Spire Trading. It's a Toronto-based tech company specializing in quantitative trading. It's a pretty small company consisting of only 15 people. And one thing I learned about this company is that it's not venture-backed, meaning it's completely self-sustained and doesn't have any investors which I think is very respectable. You don't see many small tech companies today that aren't dependent on venture capital. But because this company doesn't have a lot of capital, it grows a lot slower. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing because it gives people the time to get things right and experiment with things without having strict deadlines and performance metrics. So how did I meet them? So I met them at a career fair located in the Mars Discovery District here in Toronto. At the time, I was looking for my next internship and at the career fair, I was talking with Kamal and Sophia and gave them my resume. Initially, I applied to be a front-end developer because that's what I was interested in at the time. I didn't have any industry experience, but I did want to apply what I learned on my own and tackle real-world problems. I didn't have any industry experience, but I did want to apply what I learned on my own and tackle real-world problems. So first, I was sent to a coding challenge where I had to create a React component where I had to create a React component that would take in two image sources and toggle between them on click. It was pretty straightforward and this is pretty much the code that I came up with. And after the coding challenge, I had a interview on site at their office. This was back in April, so this was before the whole lockdown because of COVID-19. During the interview though, we realized there was some miscommunication that happened at the career fair. I thought they were hiring interns, but they were actually hiring full-times and they thought I was applying as a full-time, but I was actually applying as an intern. So the interviewer gave me the choice of leaving now or going through with the interview to get some practice, and she can ask the CEO if they're willing to hire interns for the summer. So I thought since I was already here, might as well get some practice in, and you never know, maybe the CEO will be open to interns, in which case I would need to go through with the interview anyways. So the interviewer asked me questions on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, I was asked on how I would create certain React components, say like a collapsible menu or something of that sort. And the technical question that I got was given two nodes in a binary tree, find their closest ancestor. And the nodes have a left, right, and parent field. A few weeks passed and I got an email from the CEO saying that he was open to hiring interns and would like to extend an offer to me. So I was pretty excited because this would be the first time I would be working at a small company. My previous internships were either large companies or government positions, so this was definitely something new for me. After accepting my offer, I was given a choice on what I wanted to work on for the summer. I had four choices, front-end, back-end, quant dev, and the C++ Windows application. So as you can probably tell from my other videos, I'm not a big fan of Windows, so that just left back-end, front-end, and quant dev. So originally, I was interested in front-end development, but I thought to myself, I can probably learn front-end and back-end at pretty much any company. Whereas quantitative development, there's not a lot of companies that actually do this. So this will be a really good chance for me to expose myself to this field and see what it's like. So I decided to do the quantitative development. I had no prior experience to quantitative development, but I was up for the challenge. So my first task as a quant developer was to create a simple TWAP algorithm. So this was mostly used for me to get familiar with their system, and start thinking more like a quant developer. TWAP stands for Time Weighted Average Price, and the goal of this algorithm is to minimize the market impact from quantitative traders by spreading out a large buy or sell order over time. So instead of selling a million shares immediately, you would sell 10,000 shares, 10,000 shares over two hours, three hours, four hours, or so on. So the algorithm is expected to sell or buy a certain amount of security in a certain amount of time. For example, selling 100,000 shares of Tesla by 3 p.m. And the price in which this algorithm sells it at or buys it at is dependent on the price of the stock as well as the time the stock was traded at. For example, if the stock traded at $10 at 11.02.02 and traded at $15 at 11.02.04 and traded at $20 at 11.02.08, the calculations would be 10 times the difference between the second and first trade plus 15 times the difference between the third trade and the second trade, all divided by the time difference between the third trade and the first trade. So we end up with this equation, and we basically sell and buy at $13.33. So implementing this algorithm taught me a lot on what to think about when developing an algorithm. 
For example, there's a chance that your order might not be completed. Say if the price continues to climb to $30, $40, or $50, no one's going to be selling it at $13.33 for you to buy. And this makes the algorithm pretty non-trivial. I had to incorporate timers and callback functions in case the order wasn't completed on time, in which case I would cancel the order and resend a new market order, which is guaranteed to complete as long as there's buyers and sellers on the market for it. Orders can also be partially completed, so when you're canceling an order, you need to make sure to keep that into account when you're sending out a new market order. And these algorithms are first designed as DFSAs, which are deterministic finance state automata, which I learned in second year and I never thought it would come in handy until now. After completing the algorithm, I had to write unit tests to verify it. Then I had to come up with another algorithm to benchmark mine against it. And this is called the control. This control algorithm has to be unbiased and random. And by running my algorithm with the control algorithm on historical data, we can figure out if my algorithm is actually performing well. Meaning is it actually making money because it has knowledge of the market? or is a random algorithm with no knowledge of the market able to beat it most of the time. And this part was by far the hardest part for me. I was required to gather metrics on my algorithm and produce analysis and next steps on improving on my algorithm. For example, finding the standard deviation to make sure my algorithm is consistent and finding the min max, outliers, and so on, and then plotting them visually using matplotlib. Problem is I don't have a lot of background on statistical analysis, the only required stats course in my program is a probability course, and I took that back in first year. So I struggled a lot with the terms and the numbers and figuring out what the numbers actually meant. Coming up with state machines and code was easy for me, but actually figuring out if my algorithm was performing well and doing what I think it's doing was a challenge. But after completing my 12th algorithm, I was ready to move on to the actual project that was prepared for me, creating an arbitrage trading algorithm for Bitcoin. So there's a new fund that came out on the Toronto Stock Exchange called QBTC.U and it's basically a fund that tracks Bitcoin. And the idea is to swap between QBTC and Bitcoin and try to make a profit from it. For example, if you see that Bitcoin goes down, then you probably know that QBTC will go down too. So you should probably sell it now and then buy in later. So my first task was to actually gather data on Bitcoin. Unlike stock exchanges, the crypto exchanges are a lot less regulated and there's a lot less data on them. So our company didn't have any data on Bitcoin, so I was required to go out and find historical data. And finding historical data on Bitcoin is a little harder than finding historical data on regular stock exchanges. Because the whole point of Bitcoin is so you can't really be tracked, so it's pretty hard to find companies that's actually logging all these activities. But I ended up finding a company online called Kaiko, and they actually archive a lot of these data. They have archives for L2 and L3 quotes data for Bitcoin. There are also a lot of different crypto exchanges online and we just decided to go with Coinbase as a start. So I got in touch with one of their representatives and got a two week free trial with one month access to historical data. In those two weeks I basically spammed their APIs to gather as much data as I could. Their APIs have a PageNation API but it was still pretty painful to use because their servers would crash every 15 minutes or so and I would have to restart my script. After gathering all the data, I had to clean and convert all the data into SQLite databases so our internal tools can make use of them. The algorithm we came up with at the end was using a ratio between the prices of QBTC and Bitcoin. When the market ratio fluctuates, we know that one is undervalued and the other one is overvalued and we should sell one of them and buy into the other one. When we ran it on historical data, the performance was pretty below average. We were mostly losing money than making money and I think the main issue was the exchange ratio between QBTC and Bitcoin. On their website, there's a field that tells you how many units of QBTC one Bitcoin is equal to. And this value fluctuates on a regular basis, which makes our calculations very inaccurate. For example, when I first started developing this algorithm, the number was 843.33. And I tried using different values for this and running benchmarks, and you can see that the performance is pretty different. So overall, this internship was a great experience. By stroke of luck, we both misunderstood each other, but ended up working out for both of us. This internship gave me great insights into quantitative development, all the way from data gathering and data cleaning to algorithm design, backtesting, verification, and analysis. It also made me realize how important stats is in this field, which has made me take a stats course in the coming semester. I really wish the pandemic didn't hit and this internship wasn't a remote internship, 
so I can come into the office and meet everyone else on the team. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know some of your internship experiences and I'll see you guys in the next one.